This is a Sudoku grid. Specifically, it's the Sudoku grid from the Medium Difficulty New York Times puzzle for March 18th in the year 2022. You probably already know this, but in case you don't, Sudoku is a puzzle where you have a grid with nine rows and nine columns, divided, as you see here, into nine 3x3 three three boxes. Each row, each column, and each box contains the digits 1 through 9 exactly once. You're given some of the digits, and you have to figure out the rest of them using logic. Sometimes it's pretty easy, other times it's pretty hard, and sometimes, as in this case, it's pretty medium. Anyway, none of that is the point of this video. This is the point. This is the same Sudoku grid with some bits of it colored in, specifically the 16 blue digits in the corners of the grid and the 16 yellow digits in a ring around the center box. Now, what if I were to tell you that the set of 16 blue digits and the set of 16 yellow digits were both exactly the same set of 16 digits? Would you believe me? Well, I hope you'd believe me, but you don't need to believe me because I can show you. Here is the solved puzzle with the same color highlights. Pause it and check the solution if you like. And if we list out the blue shaded digits and the yellow shaded digits, we can see that it's the same 16 digits repeated twice. So that's it. The first person to notice, or at least to post about noticing, that the 16 corner digits and the 16 ring digits are always going to be the same in any Sudoku grid was a forum user who went by the name Fistimafel. So for that reason, we call this little trick Fistimafel's Ring. Well, maybe you are still skeptical. You might be wondering if it's just a coincidence in this one specific puzzle or in some puzzles but not others. How can we know for sure that's true of every Sudoku puzzle? Well, once again, you don't need to believe me because I can show you, and I'll prove it by making three observations that will be relatively intuitive and pretty easy to follow for any Sudoku solver. Let's start with a blank Sudoku grid. I've numbered both the columns and the rows so that we can refer to them more easily. Now I've highlighted row three in blue and column six in yellow, except where the two intersect, that's green. Now, as I've already explained, every row in a Sudoku puzzle contains a complete set of the digits one through nine with no repeats. And that's also true of every column in the Sudoku puzzle. So the set of digits in row three is identical to the set of digits in column six. And where they overlap, some digit is there. It doesn't matter what it is. In a standard Sudoku, the numbers are really just arbitrary symbols after all. So let's call it a seven. If the green cell is seven, then the blue cells in row three contain every digit one through nine except seven. And the yellow cells in column six also contain every digit one through nine except seven. In other words, the set of digits they contain is identical. So that establishes our first point, what I'm gonna call our first observation. When two sets of the digits one through nine overlap in the grid, the non-overlapping regions of each set contain identical sets of digits. If you're at all familiar with Sudoku, I probably haven't said anything too surprising here. I'm just describing something you already understand intuitively, although you might not have used words like set or non-overlapping region to describe it. So let's get to the second observation. Look at the highlights in this grid. This time, we've got a blue region consisting of two rows, rows five and six, intersecting with a yellow region that consists of two columns, columns four and five. Now, two rows means two sets of the digits one through nine as does two columns. So once again, we can think of the two column region we've identified and the two row region we've identified as two equivalent sets that once again happen to overlap. And where they overlap, in the green region, there are four digits. Once again, it doesn't really matter which digits we're talking about. Let's call them one, seven, eight, and nine. So what digits are contained in the blue region? Well, the blue cells in row five must contain all the digits one through nine except seven and nine. And the blue cells in row six must contain all the digits one through nine except one and eight. So the 14 blue digits must be in some order, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine. Which digits are contained in the yellow region? Well, the yellow cells in column four must contain all the digits one through nine except one and seven. And the yellow cells in column five must contain all the digits one through nine except eight and nine. So the 14 yellow digits must be in some order, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine. So looky there, it's the same list of digits. And why wouldn't it be? We already observed in our first observation that this was true for an overlapping row and column, but now let's think about why it was true in that case. That's because we started with two equivalent sets. Remember, it was row three and column six. And we removed the same thing from both. In that case, it was a single green cell. So if you start with two things that are equivalent and remove the same thing from both, the green cell in this case, surely the leftover regions would have to still be equivalent. Well, that logic holds not just when we're overlapping sets of the digits one through nine, as in our first example, but for any overlapping sets of identical digits, even larger sets like the column four and five set or the row five and six set, they're still 
equivalent sets to one another. When we remove the same thing, the green region, which in this case is four cells, our leftover blue and yellow regions are still going to have to be equivalent to one another, which allows us to make our second observation. When any two identical sets of digits overlap in the grid, the non-overlapping regions of each set contain identical sets of digits to one another, not just overlapping sets of the digits one through nine, any overlapping sets of identical digits. Sudoku nerds like to call this set equivalence theory, which is very fancy of them, but hopefully you can understand it intuitively now and see that there's nothing really all that fancy about it. But what does any of this have to do with our friend Fistimafel and his ring? Well, let's move on to our third observation. What do we have here shaded in blue? Well, this time it's four sets of the digits one through nine, rows one, two, eight, and nine. Nothing too crazy. This time they're split into two non-adjacent chunks, but it's still four sets of the digits one through nine. Okay, now what's shaded in yellow here? Well, you might not immediately recognize this, but it is also four sets of the digits one through nine. It doesn't look like any of the examples we've seen so far. What it looks like to me actually is Lucy's psychiatric health stand from the Peanuts comic strip. But if we take a closer look, what we're actually looking at is two full columns, four and seven, and then two full boxes, box two and box eight. So yeah, these yellow cells are a set of the digits one through nine, four times. So it is an equivalent set to these blue cells. And you probably know what's next. Let's overlap them. And as we've already shown, the non-overlapping regions, which is to say the blue cells and the yellow cells, must contain identical sets of digits because we started with equivalent sets and we removed the same thing, the green cells. And if we get rid of those green cells, you will see, hopefully not to your surprise, that this pattern we're looking at right now is the same one we looked at with the New York Times puzzle which we can sum up in our third and final observation. Because the 16 corner cells and the 16 ring cells are the non-overlapping regions of two identical sets of digits, they must themselves also contain identical sets of digits. Sudoku nerds call this Fistimafel's theorem. And I guess we're done. We've proved it, hopefully in a way you can understand, and hopefully you've learned a little bit about Fistimafel's ring and about set equivalence theory. But before we go, you might be wondering, hang on, why does this matter for a Sudoku solver? Will this help me solve Sudoku puzzles? And the answer is probably not, at least not for standard Sudoku puzzles. There may be cases where you can make inferences about the corners from the ring or vice versa, but in most of those cases, there will also be simpler and quicker techniques that you can use without having to tediously compare these 16 digits to those 16 digits. For Sudoku variants like the ones you see on the Cracking the Cryptic YouTube channel, in those cases, you might find yourself using Fistimafel's ring or set equivalence theory more generally. But the main reason this matters, to me anyway, is just because it's kind of neat. It was surprising to me when I learned about it, but it felt completely obvious in retrospect, which is a fun feeling to have in your brain when you're a weirdo like me. And that's as good a place as any to end, so thank you for watching.